Hello everybody, my name is Ilya. And my name is Tyler. Together we make up Kavre, a couple that loves to play board games. And we love teaching games. Today we'll be doing a how to play for Manhattan Project War Machine. Woo woo woo! Look how retro this box looks. I love it. Very cool. Manhattan Project War Machine is designed by Jan M. Gonzalez and it's published by Grail Games, who helped sponsor this video. Now before we get started with a how to play, I just want to note that everything you see here today is a prototype and the final game may change. Please refer to the description down below for any of those final changes and ask any questions if you see something that's off. Shall we go to the table? We sure shall. As always, you'll begin by setting up. Place the game board on the center of the table. Shuffle each structure stack and reveal three tiles in each of the corresponding locations. Each player will then receive a structure, warehouse, and a cargo board along with extensions which you will place face down accordingly, utilizing the letters printed on the back. In the end, it will look something like this, or this depending on your table space. Each player will then receive three dice to start along with two government grants and company cards. You will choose one of each to keep and return the two you didn't choose to the box. You will keep your government grant card hidden and place your company card face up next to your structure board. This is now an action space you can utilize throughout the game. You'll choose a starting player and each player will obtain starting resources based on their turn order. The first player will receive the most resources, then second, third, and fourth. This is different than many other games. You're now ready to begin. In War Machine, your goal is to grow and develop the largest military power in the world. You'll do this by deploying workers, building a production engine, and stockpiling supplies and victory points. The game is played in rounds, which are determined by your player count. The more players, the less rounds. Each round will consist of each player taking a turn. On your turn, you'll perform the following. Roll action dice, take global actions, activate structures, and clean up. Once the last round is over, the player with the most victory points wins. Now let's go over each of the steps in a turn. Roll action dice. You will pick up and roll all your action dice in your cargo tiles. You may roll up to three times, but each time you roll, you must select at least one die to keep by placing it in one of your cargo tile spots. Once you've completed your rolls, you may utilize your board special ability, allowing you to trade any two of your dice for one of your choice. At this point, if you have a nuclear power die in your cargo, you'll pick up a pollution token, placing it near your board with a nuclear contamination side face up. You're now ready for the second step, taking global actions. The board has spaces for your dice, or workers or energy as we will call them. In this step, you'll relocate all your dice from your cargo to the main board and take the corresponding actions. Different iconography on dice depicts the different spaces you can go to on the main board, as well as your structures. The wrench, top hat, and star represent workers that correspond to specific spaces within each of the boards. The nuclear power dice are essentially wild dice and can be used as workers in any of the spaces. The lightning bolt dice are energy. These dice are limited in placement and rewards. You may not place an energy die without a worker being present at the location first. Now in this phase, you'll first choose a die from your cargo and proceed with placing it on a match and action space on the game board. When you place a worker die, you have a choice of various actions within that location. You'll choose and perform the action you want. Your opponents will then all choose and perform an energy action within the same location. Energy action does not have to correspond to the one you chose for the worker action. Energy dice have to be placed in spaces where your workers have already been placed. They may not be the first die placed in a location. When you place an energy die and take the corresponding action, your opponents do not get to perform an action in this case like they would have if you placed a worker tile. Now let's take a look at the locations. Finance, mine, and chemistry spaces give you the opportunity to produce resources for your warehouse. Worker actions have a bigger payout than energy actions. Trade expand supplies and ammo actions allow you to trade resources to the left of the arrow to gain those displayed to the right. Worker actions in these spaces have a better conversion rate than the energy actions. These spaces allow you to build structures. If you're using a worker action, you may choose a structure within this location at a discount or a higher cost if choosing one from another location. 
If you're using an energy dice, you may only choose structures from the same location at cost. You'll place the structure in the left most corresponding space in your structure's board. This space allows you to spend three coins to flip one of your pollution tokens to its cleaned up side. This space allows you to upgrade your cargo. You'll flip the leftmost tile and immediately roll a die and place it in space. You can utilize this die on your current turn. Finally, expand allows you to upgrade your warehouse and structures or your main cargo if you pay an additional six coins. Upgrading your cargo will upgrade your special ability, allowing you to change any one die to your choice instead of trading two for one. All upgrades in the game, including cargo, are worth two victory points at the end of the game. A quick note here is you may have noticed limits in your resources. You're limited to the quantities in your warehouse, however, upgrading your warehouse will create additional space. After using all your dice, it's time to move on to the next step, activating structures. You'll now shift all the dice you've placed onto your structures board. You'll have to ensure the dice match the symbols once again, with the energy dice not being placed unless a worker die is present. You can place a nuclear die on any of the spaces, including the company card you initially chose, which will provide a separate action only available to you. Your dice will allow you to activate structure tiles if their activation condition is satisfied. When you activate a structure, you will resolve the ability on the tile and rotate the tile as a reminder that it has been activated this round. Dice used to activate structures are not spent and may be used to resolve more than one structure at their location. Let's go over the various activation condition. One die indicates a single activation. If you have at least one die here, you'll activate the location once. The one with two dice works in a similar fashion. You'll need two dice to activate the corresponding tile. If the dice are not connected, the tile can be activated as many times as there are dice, as long as you have that many dice present, so two times in this instance. Zones effectively buff other structures in the same zone. A zone power is added to each other activation within the same region. A structure that activates once will get the zone benefit once. A structure that activates multiple times will get it multiple times. And endgame bonus structures will get no benefit. These tiles, the game end tiles, will be scored at the end of the game based on their conditions. After completing your structure actions, you're now on the last step. Clean up! You'll return your dice to the cargo tiles and rotate any structures you've activated back to their original position. Once everyone has taken a turn, the round is over. You'll advance the round marker and keep playing, upgrading your board and creating an engine of actions. Once the last round is completed, you can score. You line up your points from the victory point track, your structures, and extensions you've upgraded, as well as the victory points on the government contract card if you met the condition. For each pollution you've cleaned up, you'll receive a victory point. However, you'll lose a victory point for each token still in the nuclear contamination side. You'll compare your totals and the player with the most points wins. Well, that's our how to play. Thanks so much for watching. We really appreciate it. Do you have any questions? Is there anything that wasn't clear? Feel free to utilize that comment section down below and let us know because we'd love to hear your thoughts. And of course, if you like this video, hit that thumbs up, press that subscribe button if you're new here, and possibly check out our Discord down below. Ooh, for sure. Have a good rest of your day and bye. Bye.